Everybody, it's me, Nate, aka Devil Dog, and I'm back with a new movie review. I had the pleasure to see an advanced screening of the movie Halloween Ends. That's right, the finale to the trilogy of the Blumhouse versions of Halloween. As you all know, the only ones that they took part in and believe in was canon and was the first movie. After that, everything else was expunged from the record, so to say. So if you really think about this series, it had Halloween 2, Halloween 3, and this is technically Halloween 4, if you want to get technical. Uh, now, yes, this is a uh, you know straight-up Halloween knife. I'm going to put that down. It's shiny. It's so shiny. Uh, but here's my review of Halloween Ends. Oh boy, there's a lot to say about this, and I will say this, I'm going to try my best not to spoil it. I can recommend you see this movie. I think the first one was a little uh, uh, preachy, a little odd. The second one had a lot of massive gore, but it was really stupid. Let's be honest, it had a mob mentality, and uh, the mob was stupid, because in the second one, it's like, okay, you got the whole uh, town of Hattonfield going after uh, Michael Myers, and you're all taking turns. It's like, tag, you're it. Okay, we'll go with the game, get close. Oh, oh he, can feel, he shot me with my own gun. Now, the kills in this are pretty effective and gory once again. I don't think the body count is really that high in this movie, but it didn't really need to be because the whole plot behind this movie, without spoiling, is it's basically diving deep into showing you what makes a killer a killer. Uh, they brought on some new characters. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to get into massive detail of their names or anything, but you can see the. it's almost like there was two movies sewn together in this one. You do have Michael Myers re returning, but it ain't until near the uh, halfway point and end of the movie that he really starts showing up and doing what he's best at, killing, you know, breaking necks and cashing checks. But honestly, this movie kind of centers upon just uh, people in general, uh, how uh, how they can be to one another in a bad sense. Um, because in this day and age, there's a lot of violence and everything bad. And it's from the scenario that basically the survivors of the previous murders were, uh, are pretty much mad at Jamie Lee Curtis's character, blaming her for the fact, like, if you didn't stir him up, he wouldn't have come and killed all these people and all this other stuff. So they have a deep-rooted resentment for, for, for Laurie Strode or whatever her name is. 
And it's sad. It, you get, get to see how people in general are just jerks. And there's so many aspects of this that remind me of the movie It, the new one, uh, the first part, uh, where it's just people being dicks. Just people being jerks to one another. Instead of understanding, uh, they just go out and they make things worse until they pretty much make a killer. And, um, you know, it, it's very interesting. Like I said, it's mm, the first half of it, it's not slow, but it seems like it's a different movie, okay? It centers upon uh, a different character following him around uh, through his life of basically what's happened and how people don't respect him and how they still blame him for something that happened, which was an accident. But it warps this young kid's mind into a place to where he basically snaps. And so it's kind of basically trying to show you exactly... Uh, kind of like the first Rob Zombie Halloween where it dug deep into the kid's mindset of what made him a psychopath. This does the same of how, um, you know, people in general can lead. Instead of doing the right thing, they do the wrong thing and they push the person towards doing that, going to the dark side. Um, now, once I said, it, it, once it gets to the halfway point, then it picks up. Then you got old Mikey Myers back. He's doing his thing, and it has one hell of a good finale. A lot of people might be upset with the ending of this movie. I was not. I think it's fitting, considering that this is supposed to be it. They're not planning on making any more of these new Halloween movies. Uh, they might make another version, but as for this particular timeline, the Blumhouse timeline, this is it. This is it. Because then you see the movie, you'll know at the end, this is it. Okay, they're not going to be able to make any more. They make it very adamant to let you know and show you they're not making another one of these. Um, honestly, um, I absolutely love this movie. Um, it, it does start off kind of you know, slow, but it does have a rather dark, sick, twisted story to it that does keep ramping up and does keep explaining things and gets to a point where it comes to a head and crap goes down and, and honestly when stuff starts going down then it's the good classic stuff that you're wanting to see and you're like oh yeah oh yeah ah, oh uh. and most of the people in this that do get killed are are douchebags they're people that i can't feel bad for there's a couple people i feel bad for that get get it in the end on here um but for the most part everyone kind of has it coming so it's kind of a cathartic sort of feeling of going well you know what you shouldn't have done that and that wouldn't have happened and, and the main plot behind this basically is to be a good person be a good person to one another understand people and learn how to forgive as long as you have proof that the person didn't do anything wrong um but honestly uh, hands down uh, I highly recommend, if you've seen the first one, if you've seen the second one, please check out the third one, Halloween Ends. It is a good and fitting movie for this trilogy. Personally, I kind of like it the best. I really do. I, I like the flow. I like the character development. I, I love where they were going with this, and I love the ending. They, they, they go out at with a bang at the end and there's no way like the end of the uh, the first one where you know he was uh, michael myers was trapped in the basement on fire of the house and you're like oh well, how are they gonna write that out and they, you know they wrote it out to where you're like okay feasible even though he's like a what a 50 year old man yeah still being able to do this crap but nonetheless they make sure in this one <laughs> they make sure that this is the end um, honestly, um, from this point on, there's going to be spoilers. There, uh, there's going to be spoilers. Um, it's not going to ruin the movie for you, but it will give you an idea. So if you were on the fence of seeing this and you're not sure and you want to know based off of my review, here it goes. It mainly centers upon this new kid who a uh, long time ago, because this takes place like four years after the events of the second film. And it centers upon this young kid who starts off as a babysitter for this kid that seems like he's a good little kid. But it turns out he's a little demon. He's a little bastard. And when the parents go out to a party, um, you know, this kid is terrorizing the, 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 you know, the you know, babysitter. He's tricking him into thinking that, like, something's going on in the house. And, and he basically ends up uh, tricking him to go upstairs thinking that the kid is hurt. Um, you know, leaves a knife there. He's playing it off like someone's attacking him. And he locks the, the guy in the attic. Okay, and it's scaring the hell out of this guy. This guy, you know, is just there to try to be a babysitter, and this kid is just a p 
punk. So basically, the parents are coming home early, and he's pounding, kicking as hard as he can on this door, and he's able to kick the door open, and when he does, it hits the kid who's on the other side, knocks him over the railing, and he falls to his death and snaps his neck in half and dies right in front of the parents as they see him standing looking over with a knife in his hand. So it kind of fast-forwards a bit, and the guy, basically, they let him off because they realized it was accident. But their town of Hattonfield, the way they are, keep looking at him, and you're like, oh, you're a murderer, you're a child murderer, you're, you know, you're a loser. So this guy is ostracized, and he seems like an honestly a good kid at first. And basically, throughout the movie, it, it just all this stuff keeps happening to him with these punk-ass teenagers that just keep picking on him. You know, they're beating him up constantly. And one by one, the more and more stress that's applied to this guy, he starts to mentally break and, until basically, um, you know, they beat him up so bad and they throw him over a bridge. And they're like, oh, he just fell on his own, you know, and he falls and he gets hurt. But when he gets up, he, he sees there's like this homeless man near a bonfire near a sewer drain. And for some reason, um, Michael Myers has been alive this whole time, hiding out in the sewers. Don't know what he's been eating, but this homeless guy you know, that's out front there thinks he's Michael Myers. He's like, go in there and get the mask for me. I'm the Michael Myers. Get a mask for me. And uh, the kid snaps, and he has like a knife with him. So he stabs the homeless person repeatedly and murders him. And But he, he feels shocked at first, but not that much. And as things progress... He starts just getting more pissed and disturbed with people, the way people are treating him, and he starts turning to the dark side, so to say. And even Laurie Strode notices it. So I looked in that boy's eyes, and I could see that he is not right. He may be a good person, but he's going down a dark path that if he goes there, he's not coming back. And as the movie progresses, more and more stuff dumped on this kid where he officially snaps. You know, and, you know, he goes out to a Halloween party with the Laurie Strode's, you know, you know, a daughter, I think it is. Um, and, you know, they're kind of falling in love. But while they're there, naturally shit happens. And, you know, he storms out of there because the mother of the child that died was at the party and starts ostracizing, just yelling, you because of you, you give my baby dead. And he, he, he just snaps. And he has this mask that when he was at the costume party, he was dressed up like uh, the, the scarecrow or something. So he's wearing this uh, scarecrow mask. And... He just gets fed up, so he starts going around to people who are picking on him. Uh, first up is um, he, 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 he kills uh, like this one person, and he's wearing the, the, the scarecrow mask as he's killing people. And uh, you know, one by one, he's going to these people that treat him like crap, and he's killing them. And uh, eventually, there's even in this part where Michael shows up and starts helping him kill. Yeah, Michael's helping him kill. Like, the one girl that's getting away from him, Michael, like, sticks her to the wall with a knife and stuff. So his first kill is stabbing someone. Uh, go figure, right? And as the movie progresses, basically the kid starts doing stuff like lures those punk teenagers by carving a psycho into their car, lures them back basically um, to like the junkyard and stuff, and brutally murders them viciously. I mean, honestly, he runs one lady down while she's trying to climb over the fence and runs her over with a, uh, a, a tow truck. And, and, you know, she's pinned. She's not dead, but, you know, he's, she's pinned. And he goes up to the other guy, stabs him in the eye, brutally kills him, stabs this lady in the neck, kills her. And in the best part, takes the one jock guy that beat him up through the whole movie, holds him down and takes a torch, a fucking blowtorch, and melts him in his mouth as he's sitting there and burns him alive where he's screaming. Oh, it's a, ah, and that's brutal. And then he goes over and stomps the lady's head and crushes it like a tomato and, you know, takes off for a bit. And, you know, he just starts murdering everybody to where even his father accidentally gets shot in the head and killed. So he goes back to his mother's house, murders her. Then he goes over to Laurie Strode's house, basically, because what he did is he had went and beat up, um, you know, Michael Myers enough to take his mask. So this kid is basically taking on the guise of being the new, you know, sh the, the shape. Because they even say evil just takes a shape. It's not just one person. And in this case... He tries to become the new Michael Myers. He wears the mask. He goes to the Strode house, gets into a fight uh, with her. But she she played it off. She's like, I knew you were coming. I knew you, you think I'm stupid. And he shoots him twice. And, and then basically he's sitting there laughing as the daughter's showing back up. And he's like, you know what? 
if you can't, you know, you can't have her, I can't have her, no one can. He stabs himself in the throat. And she takes the knife as the daughter walks in and thinks, oh my God, Lori Stroh, you just killed my boyfriend. And it wasn't that, you know, so she was leaving. But then the real Michael Myers shows up in the house and there's this big epic fight scene between him and Laurie Strode in the kitchen and throughout. This, mwah, mwah, oh, that's the best part of the movie. If, if the whole movie was like that, it would be a A plus, magnifique, perfect movie. Really, it would. Because it's so tense and disturbing and the music's playing. They're fighting and stabbing around. And then Laurie Strode's able to pin him by stabbing both hands into the table. Drops a refrigerator on him. Takes the mask off so you can finally see him. Somewhat. Slits his throat. Slits his wrists. Stabs him in the chest. And kills him. But that's not it. They're like, no. We've got to end this the right way. So the police are called. They strap his dead body to the top of the car. And there's like a funeral procession where everybody in the whole town's following him. And they follow him to the junkyard. And they take his body and they throw it in the car crusher. And they show it just getting ripped to shreds and just destroyed. So the whole crowd could see that Michael Myers was completely dead and not coming back ever again. There's no way he can come back because he was literally torn to shreds. And his mask was off, so it wasn't no Ben Tramer shit. You knew it was actually the real Michael Myers. And at the end, it shows Laurie Strode, who lives, writing up a, a book telling a story about what happened and, and how no matter where you go, there's always going to be evil that can always take in a different shape. And then they drive off in the sunset. The daughter's leaving Hattonfield while she sits there on a, a front of her house with that one police officer guy that they kind of fall in love with. And they're sitting and that's the end of the movie. Um, hands down, I have to say... Without a shadow of a doubt. Out of the three movies, I like this one the best. I really, really do. The pacing, while slow, is good and superb. You're wanting to see Michael Myers just killing people. It does happen. But it centers on this new character and showing the deep dive that this poor kid takes and goes and becomes a murderer and starts enjoying it. And like a nice little glimpse into what probably led to Michael Myers becoming that way. And in the end, I can actually highly recommend this. I got to see it early, but I do believe this video, um, you know, depending when it goes up, you can see it in theaters and you can also stream it on Peacock if you have Peacock Premium. I highly say check this movie out. I absolutely love this movie from start to finish. Uh, a lot of people might be disappointed in with the pacing, how it's centered on a different character for quite a while. They might not like the ending where they're officially killing off Michael Myers, but I think it serves a purpose, and I'm glad they went ahead and did this. They they went for the you know, they ran for the gates, they ran for the gates, and they got there. I actually love this movie. Please leave in the comments below what you personally think of Halloween Ends. Do you think it's a good way to send off Michael Myers? Do you agree or disagree with my uh, review in any way? Please leave in the comments below if you like this movie, if you didn't like this movie, what parts you thought could have been better, what parts you think they could have cut out to save time. And remember, give me a thumbs up, like this video, please subscribe, and here at Devil Dog Gaming, we always end our videos by saying, have fun, play hard, and remember people, the devil is in the details. Peace out until next time.